Shalom and good morning from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. This is Rabbi Yehuda Glick from Jerusalem and I am here uh, as a guest of the Harvest Time Church of Eau Claire, and we will be running a seminar uh, this week, two days, uh, on the topic of uh, Sukkot, the holiday of Tabernacle. I'm here with my wonderful wife, Adas, and we'll definitely be talking about concepts that connect to the holiday of Tabernacle. Sukkot, tabernacles to the concepts of the temple in Jerusalem, to the concepts of the family, and many other, many other issues. But if I'm already here, and I'm, a, as you can see, I'm in the Sukkah, the only Sukkah in Euclid, Wisconsin. I'm at the Sukkah of the Ziegelbaum family, a wonderful, beautiful family, Chaim and Stephanie, uh, originally from uh, Venezuela. They've been living here for 40 years. And they're the only Jewish observant family uh, in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, in, I'm sorry, it's Eau Claire, Wisconsin. In Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I'm in the sukkah. You can see behind me, you have the species, the uh, wheat and the barley, the uh, grape, the pomegranate, and the fig, the olives, and the dates, the seven species that Israel is blessed by. I'm in the sukkah. And I, of course, we eat here this week, and I even slept here, as uh, is the, uh, one of the uh, ways we fulfill the commandment, the mitzvah of sukkah. And I had a good time until around 3.30 in the morning when it started raining. So we went in and uh, uh, did some studying on my own. But I want to share with you uh, some topics about sukkot. So I'm already here, and I already have this uh, technology the video uh, we want and we take advantage of it so I want to give a few talks about the idea of Sukkot maybe part of them I will be mentioning today in the Harvest Time Church uh, today at Wednesday evening at around 6 p.m. we'll be speaking Hadas and myself but I want to give in this piece a an introduction which I think is very very important for anybody who wants to understand the Jewish calendar. Uh, what is uh, the Jewish calendar all about? And today I want to give a double perspective that the Torah refers to when it talks about the three pilgrim festivals. We know there are three pilgrim festivals, Passover, uh, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, or in their Hebrew names is Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot. So I want to point out a double perspective that the Torah refers to when it talks about the, the, the uh, pilgrim festivals. The Torah associates the three pilgrim festivals with two distinct concepts. First, the Torah relates them to the idea of Ness, where in Hebrew the word Ness means miracle, but not only, it means also banner, signs, indications that Hashem, who created the world, God Almighty, continues to function in it and control history. In this aspect, the festivals commemorate the exodus from Egypt, the ness, the miracle that molded the Jewish history for all generations. That's one aspect. The other aspect, the Torah associates the pilgrim festivals with the natural aspect of the land of Israel and its agricultural cycles. In this aspect, they're connected to the ingathering of the harvest, the spring harvest, and the first fruit offering sanctified to Hashem, to God, from the produce of the land. The entry into the land of Israel, into Eretz Israel, is the return of the Israelite nation not only to the land, but to the naturalness of its land. The soul, the agricultural cycle, the roots, and from here arising, the manifestation of sanctity of the temple. And we have to remember that the sanctuary and the service therein are similarly connected to the land, to nature, and to agriculture the sacrifices, the offerings, 
the incense. What are they all about? They're about bringing the plant and the animal life and to express the living connection between the Creator, God Almighty, the Creator of nature, and His creations. So the purpose of the sanctuary is to maintain the natural creation and to reveal in it the glory of Hashem. Hashem who watches and oversees all. And now I want to try to explain a very basic topic that talks about the whole concept of the, of, of the people of Israel. A natural nation is usually born and formed in the land of its birth. It celebrates natural and national festivals. It marks agricultural and religious ritual dates and seasons. If it, a natural nation, is exiled from its land, or if it becomes assimilated in its own land, among those who conquers it, or uh, those who it conquers, such a nation ceases to exist. But Am Israel, totally different. The people of Israel is unique among the nations because it was born not in its homeland. It was born and formed in the land of Egypt. It was born and formed through the miracle of the exodus from Egypt. The, the, Egyptian, the exodus from the Egyptian exile. For Am Israel, for the people of Israel, the land of Israel, does not represent a natural homeland. Rather, an aspiration, a goal, a prayer, a destiny. It represents the vision of longing to connect, longing to connect heaven and earth, the miraculous and the natural, history and agriculture. Thus, if Am Yisrael, God forbid, is exiled from its land or remains under the rule of its conquerors of the land, in its land for a long period, it nevertheless lives on surviving and praying for a new exodus from Egypt and for the miracle of the gathering of the exiles. If Am Yisrael had been a natural territorial nation, the natural festivals would have preceded the festivals to the historical miracle, agriculture, and religious worship would have come before the historical sign and event, both chronologically and in terms of natural order. But if Am Israel were a natural nation, it would not have survived its history. The Torah, therefore, introduces the festivals as associated with the exodus from Egypt, the historical miracle, rather than the natural agricultural season of spring or autumn, which is in the background. What happened to Am Yisrael, the people of Israel, in the exile? In the exile, Am Yisrael observed the festivals commemorating the miraculous aspect. The defining events of the Israelite history for all generations. Passover marked the Exodus. Shavuot, Pentateuch, marked the giving of the Torah. Sukkot, the wandering in the wilderness. Sinai, the wilderness of the nations. In exile, Am Yisrael, the people of Israel, cannot celebrate the festivals of the spring, the harvest, the ingathering, the festivals of nature of the, of, of the land of Israel. These latter festivals belong to a natural agricultural cycle and they're especially related to the temple where the respective offerings are brought before the Lord Hashem, your God. So throughout the period of the destruction and the exile, there was no possibility of celebrating the natural agricultural festivals in the land of Israel. Not around the world, not, not even in Israel. Since the absence of the Mikdash, the temple, God's servants have nowhere to bring the Omer, the Bikurim, the first fruits, the produce of their ingathering, 
In exile, the nation was left with only token memorials of these agricultural and natural festivals. The counting of the Omer, or reading the, the, uh, the Book of Ruth on, on Shavuot, or even carrying the four species on Sukkot. So today, the return of the people of Israel to the land of Israel is not only a miracle of returning geographically to our land, but it's a returning to the source of the creation of us as a people. Combining heaven and earth, combining miracle and nature, combining the connection of the people of Israel to God directly and to God through the Holy Land. And this is the basis of the two aspects of the world of the three pilgrim festivals. We will, be, we will continue and talk in our next talks about specific commandments uh, of the holiday of Sukkot, the holiday of joy. But from here, from you, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, I want to send you all the blessings of Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom to all.